you know, I'm a super fan. And yeah. I believe we're getting there. I met that. Yeah. But I was like, I know this is going to happen. Well, and I think the big change is that um, since we've met two years, right, we've continued to work diligently on this path, building more and more features and capability. The markets come toward us and we've come toward the market. And we're getting to the point where we have full built out products that allow you to use this well at scale. And then also the world of AI, as you said so articulately, continues to become so advanced that if you're smartly taking advantage of what's available in open source and then doing some sort of fine tuning domain specific kinds of models, which our AI ML team does, you can really get a lot of horsepower. It's it's really up to the, the organizations to enable what they have, what they control, enable it to be part of the AI work. Yes. And, and that's it, their job. It, absolutely. I think one thing that can take a big load off of media companies' concerns about um, the whole AI space is to think in terms of your intellectual property. Right. One, and, and this is really important to both how the fabric works from a, you know, just an ownership and a cryptographic standpoint. But I also think it's very important to us personally in our values um, at Alluvio, which is that the first of all, the digital content is someone's IP. Right. And for and now that it, we're even getting to digital twins, it's going to literally become the digital representation of right. a human. And so I think the foundational point of the fabric is any publishing is owner controlled. The content is encrypted. Uh, the versions are transacted upon um, with a, you know, a version proof, a version hash that you can count upon. And the whole blockchain based nature of the fabric allows it to be self-verifying. Right. So you start with that premise. And that means that all of these different workflows that use AI can have authenticated owner control content. Now, that can be used for training. It can also be used for ground truth. And then finally, it can be used for um, domain-specific or owner-specific models. Right. And uh, that's really interesting because people often don't think this way. Inference is a form of compute on the content. You can very much tie that to a given tenant or owner in the fabric. Right. So if you're a media company, first of all, you can have models that are created that are specific to your content. Right. Secondly, you can augment the ground truth yourselves without having that going out into public domain. So it's yours, right, for the inference. And thirdly, the runtime can be constrained of the inference to your content. So you have the ability to really build AI value directly on what you own without leakage into the you know, the public domain where you don't want it. That's right. And then vice versa, you know the origin of uh, the inference that you're helping to power. It becomes an asset rather than something that might take advantage of you. And I think this is going to be absolutely game-changing for the content companies as they embrace the state-of-the-art AI. And it's one of those things to where, uh, you know, we we heard yesterday uh, with Comcast that was talking about we don't necessarily want our content being used to train exactly class for other people for other people exactly right? exactly exactly so with your system not all of the other stuff that we have that we've talked yes. about in terms of distribution yeah. and that but it's also a tenant based system to where you can yes. do training and own your models and control your models it, so. a, a, absolutely absolutely and i think it 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 both solves that problem inherently um, because it prevents that from being true the second is you could also look at that now as a true monetization opportunity you can host your content um, so that it can be used by others for training but under your control that's right uh, through the authorization and then fine grain collection uh, because we have you know very good end-to-end, -end, if you will, not only analytics, but just literally every access, a review, every stream, every download uh, of every offering is metered. You can then um, combine that with, you know, royalty accrual. And um, that's something that we can do very well at scale. And I think we're going to start to see not only these, uh, what I would call tenant or brand specific models, but then also new types of vault systems where they are then licensing their content right. under their control for authorized training. The, the last is scale of being able to do the training. Um, it's been very unsustainable to do these like forklift sort of transfers of this content you've licensed to train on from me. Right. And in Fabric, it could be done in place. That's right. Uh, and then the last thing on that one, I would say um, 
the licensing of your content is becoming a thing because everybody has this stuff and they know that they're not going to be domain experts in LLMs or in costs. Totally, totally. They want it. I think the whole world has got to the point where we understand that some things were not done very well, but we're we're here. It's, yeah. The cat's out of the bag. So now let's get to a licensing model to where people are paying for it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So the last thing that I want to just cover is NIL. Yeah, and very exciting. You know, everybody's talking about crypto and blockchain and all of this, you know, four years ago, five years ago, yeah. and, and all of that is yeah. you started to shift it to mainstream. To mainstream, which is great. And one of the things that we hear a lot because of Carrie, because yeah. Carrie did the, the first uh, face swap, yeah. fully licensed model shoot Susan Vogue and yeah. Folly and all that. So when you think about collegiate athletics and yeah. these kids that are in NIL, to be able to train a model or train a capture of themselves to where now I can, I don't necessarily have to go out to the car dealership or to Bob's bar yes. or to the barbecue house to monetize my likeness, yes. right? I could train a model on myself and then with AI, we can actually insert you into that. Yes. And you're doing some interesting stuff in that yeah, space. Yeah, absolutely. So I think most people are familiar with the idea of a digital twin and the uh, as I have learned, and now we're part of, uh, there is advanced scanning technology that comes from the VFX space that allows for creating a three, a, a three-dimensional representation of the person at um, high resolution, and then to with model weights to be able to produce a human-like replica digitally. All of that, the model, the resulting scan files, and then also the renderings as video can be hosted in the fabric um, and then owner controlled, just like we talked about. And then of course, embedded and reused in other um, streaming derivatives, for example, to use simple cases and probably a more uh, innovative kind of multi-dimensional sort of uh, video going forward. And I think this is a really big deal in terms of having uh, the full control over likeness for anyone for whom that could be valuable. For all of us, it could be valuable, but very specifically for rising athletes and stars, it, it means so much. And then at the NIL in particular, obviously has opened up a huge incentive for young people to be in a position to at least capture themselves in the state and then furthermore be able to, you know, practically maybe take advantage of their opportunities to have their likeness appear. And this will really scale that up under their control. Uh, I think the other piece that's interesting about it is, again, it keeps the cost down so that it can work for more. The nice thing about NIL is it reaches to the even down to the local athlete right. and it makes it possible so that your local community can support you in that sponsorship because of the granularity of associated sponsorship, all these things we've been talking about. And I think that's just really great for really again, decentralizing the value, making it so lots of people can benefit and it stays close to where pe the fans are, right? So for the, the the companies that are out there that are building around NIL or the people that are in the collectives and that are working with colleges and universities, and there's opportunities now for them to be able to work with their students, have them train yep. their model, do yep. the capture, put it into the fabric, yep. and then now it's a cryptographically secured. Secured and, and authorizable. Traceable. traceable. So they can have I, full control yes. over if you sign a deal with Nike or Adidas yes. or a local uh, food bag. This is where the likeness originates from, absolutely. It's full traceability. So That's right. Know where it is, and, and yeah. you can put small contact serving and typing it. So and serving. Paid um, or they get the release of these things. Yes, and I, I think also is the presentation to get the likeness into video is again one of these, in the classical world, a barrier to being able to do it in this case you can actually insert the video rendering into the content, right? right? In the same way that we've Which been talking about it. Which to see practice yes. in school to go do a photo shoot. Totally. Like you want to do yeah. it. And they yes. Can, but, but for scale, yeah. like they can't be in all places. Yes. And verifiability would be the last point I would add, Daniel, to this, which is, of course, then everyone would be concerned about fakes of their likeness. Well, in this case, there's a verification proof. And now we brought that to a way that people understand, like an SSL browser certificate. We have a verification proof in our embeddable players for images and videos that will run in line and just say, this is authentically from this owner it. and it's verified as being the version we expect it to be. It, it's tamper proof and you know that it is when you look at it in contrast to some kind of fake someone might stand. Sure. And I uh, think I think the entire world needs to understand that we are moving into a trust economy. Like exactly. Because you have to understand what the source of the material is. 
Yes. Because it can be faked. Yes. Right. And I, I do think um, this goes, obviously, sport. Sport has just huge fan value. But then you get into the credibility of news. And I think this is the future, as we've heard from so many of our news partners. This is one of the most valuable aspects mm -hmm. and critical parts of the current situation with news streaming is is just the verify. The 100%. Okay. And, and that's, you know, outside of, I love the sports piece of it. You know that. We've worked on that for years. Together, ago. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but absolutely, I think the verif the verification. Of yes, and all the content. It's 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 a trusted kind of deal. That's where we're going. It, it's also, I think, the saving grace with social because social is here to stay, and uh, what we really need is to be able to easily distinguish truth from potentially fiction.